Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Thank you, choir. Sanctuary choir, make your way on up here to, tonight. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Hallelujah. He loved us when we were unlovable. The Bible said when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. The Lord loves us so much tonight that before any person in this house ever got here, God was already prepared to minister to the need in your life. You're not here by chance. You're not here by accident tonight. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. God brought you to this house tonight to hear this sing and enjoy this fellowship, to hear the preaching of the Word of God, and to receive what God has for you this evening. How many is going to receive from the Lord? How many is going to give to God? How many know that God is worthy of the best of our praise? Hallelujah. Worship tonight with the Sanctuary Choir.
remember, child, lift up your hands. I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. And I hope that will carry me on. And I, I don't have to be the old man inside of me. Cause his days are long, dead and gone. And I, I I've got, got a new name, name, a new life, I'm not, not the same. And I hope that will carry me on. I am redeemed. You said, Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed say amen tonight. Amen. How many can say it's well with your soul tonight? Hallelujah. Well, 
well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. Oh, the storms may come, the winds may blow. This is what I know. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Oh, it is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. Well, it is well. It is well. This is one thing that's right. Oh, it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. Let's sing that one more soul. time. Oh, it is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. Well, it is well. It is well. well with my soul. Oh, the storms may come, the winds may blow. This is one thing that's sure I know. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Job was a perfect and an upright man. He was godly in all of his ways. The devil thought he could have old Job's soul. He would just take his possessions away. So he stripped him of all of his riches. Then he took his children and left Job all alone. But Job said, my Redeemer liveth. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. Well, it is well, well, it is well with my soul. Oh, the storms may come, the winds may blow. This one thing that you I know. It is well. With my soul, well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Oh, the storms may come, the winds may blow. This one thing for sure I know. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Oh, now there's been trouble with this old body ever since the fall of mankind. Our quest is left unanswered. Thy word is a trouble of mine. But if you belong to Jesus, on his promise you can stand. Said I'll never leave you, nothing can take it from the master's hand. My God, sing it. It is well. Hallelujah. With my soul. Well, it is well. It is well. well with my soul. Oh, the storms may come, the winds may blow. This is one thing for sure I know. It is it well. Is well. It, is it is well. It is well. well. With this old body ever since the fall of mankind, our quest is left unanswered. There were is a trouble of mine, but if you belong to Jesus, on this promise you can stand. Said I will never leave you, nothing can take it from the master's hand. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Oh, the storms may come and the wind may blow. This oh. one thing that you I know. Devil may find storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Devil may find the storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find the storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find the storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find the storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. It is well. Can we go back one more time? It is well. Somebody needs to know this tonight. Say. Devil may find the storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace of my soul. Devil may find the storms may blow, but he can't take away the peace. Oh, church, it is well. It is well with my 
soul. Is it well with your soul tonight? It is well with my soul. The storms may come, the winds may blow. This one thing for sure I know. God, it's well with my soul. outcome of what it is you're dealing with in your life tonight but the one thing you can absolutely know and be certain of is that everything between you and God is all right did you know that is the very spiritual definition of peace amen it's not built or based on circumstances it's just knowing that regardless of the outcome regardless of where I'm at and what I'm going through my heart and my God are together everything is all right it is well with my soul. I'm going to ask Brother Roger to come around and uh, greet you tonight and tell us what we've got going on tomorrow. Come on, Brother Roger. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I'm so thankful from the bottom of my heart. I just want to say I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that are here tonight. You didn't have to be here, but you chose to be here. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. This is your youth conference. We're here. Uh, this, I mean, this isn't McClinney Church of God. This is a youth conference. So wherever you're from, we want you to get in tonight and get what God has for you. Don't worry about nobody else. You get what God has for you. Uh, just a couple announcements. After service tonight, we're going to be having uh, dinner over in the fellowship hall. So once the, at the conclusion of the altar service, you want to just make your way over there. Uh, we're going to have, I think, a taco bar and some nachos or whatever you'd like. Um, tomorrow morning service is going to start at 1030. Everybody that will, please come out and join us. Uh, we're going to have a uh, youth activity day afterwards, so uh, be prepared to play ball. Hopefully it doesn't rain us out. That's, uh, it's not looking too good here lately, but we're going to be playing volleyball, basketball, football, just whatever you want to do. Just have a good time. But I'm just so thankful that you're here. We love each and every one of you. If you need anything, just let us know, and we appreciate you. Thank you, Brother Roger. Amen. Let me say along with him, thank you for coming and being a part of our, our youth conference, and we pray that the Lord blesses you. We pray that God does something in your life in this conference that you can take home with you and bless your church. Amen. And I pray your life is forever changed as a result of what you receive in this conference. We come down time tonight to receive our offering. And every year in our youth conference, now I told you last night, for those of you that wasn't here, I'll tell you again. My wife told me before church, she said, now, it's a youth conference. It's a youth conference. It's a youth conference. I said, well, what are you telling me that for? You scared I'm going to make it all about world missions, aren't you? She said, I know you will. Amen. Well, it's not all about world missions, but it's about young people tonight reaching around this world. As a matter of fact, the other side of the world and touching the world for God. We have so many things that are, are going on that we just invite you to be a part of. But one thing that we have going on, and I think it's a huge deal. It's a big deal. We've watched this gospel make full circle back to where it all started. But Eddie Sullivan and I and a few more were in Israel uh, just a few, uh, just here, here a while back, uh, and we just, we learned a lot about Christianity, and we found out it's 1% Christian in Israel, the statistic, 1% Christian, you boil that down to Pentecostals and what you know to be the real church, you know it's much less than that. Well, while we were there, the Lord laid on our heart to uh, help to establish a church that was started. The pastor was just about ready to give up and quit. As a matter of fact, he said that they really in their hearts had, had kind of strayed away from the Lord, so discouraged in the work. And so we began to support them, and the Lord began to bless the church, and the church began to grow. Then Brother Jeff and Sister Marcy went and ran our first school of Christ in Jerusalem, Israel, with just the pastor and his wife. The school of Christ, as you know, is very challenging. So for the first uh, week of that school, it, it just kind of crossed up. 
with some of the things that was uh, uh, in their hearts, the pastor and his wife, and some of the things that, you know, just religion had, had, had just put their blocks, I guess, roadblocks to what God really wanted them to be. But it was during that school that God really broke them and done a wonderful work in their life. Brother Jeff and Sister Marcy came back home, and we ran and graduated another school. I think we had between 12 and 15. I can't remember that graduated from the school of Christ there. Well, the church in Israel uh, began to grow, and God began to bless. And I, I, the, uh, the last I talked to our pastor, he said we had somewhere uh, around 30. But now we're reaching into the West Bank, into the city uh, of Ramallah. Uh, there was a Christian group that came through. About 80 people were saved, and they left. And so we had about 80 Christians behind that wall in the West Bank in Ramallah who just needed a pastor. And so our pastor is going in next week. He's rented a hotel there. He's going to be having a convention. Uh, they're working the area. It's not very safe. He said to pray for their safety above all. And uh, so let's pray for them that God would keep them safe. But he's going to have a convention there for three days, three services a day. And it, it's all about evangelism. It's about reaching the lost. And uh, so at the end of that convention, we're going we're to plant a church in the West Bank among those Arabs in Ramallah. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. There's a very real harvest among the Arabs and the secular Jews. You wouldn't think it in the land of Israel, but there's a, a good majority of Jewish people that don't believe anything. They're just secular. They don't believe anything. But they will listen to a presentation of the gospel, as will uh, those Arabs when it is presented under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And that is what we're seeing. And so I want you to be a part of that. I'm, I, I received $1,000 to send to finish $2,000 that was needed uh, to cover the cost of the convention. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to bring this to this youth conference tonight. I'm going to give these young people the opportunity to touch that part of the world where everything started, where Jesus walked and talked and taught and preached, where the Holy Ghost fell. Oh, what a warfare there has been there for the last 2,000 years. Brother Eddie Sullivan can tell you, he can testify to that, that where the Holy Ghost came, the devil has tried and has almost succeeded in stamping Pentecost out. But how many know God will always have a people and God will always have a church? You see, sometimes that church is called a remnant, and it's a remnant for a reason. It's not a majority. It is a piece of the original, and that original is Christ. And we've got a remnant in Israel and we believe God is about to pour his spirit out upon that remnant and we're going to reap a harvest in the land of the Bible. And I want you young people, I want you youth leaders and churches to help us on this Friday night to reach behind that west wall. You know, it'd be very dangerous, Brother Lamar, if you and I tried to go there. If we just tried to go there and preach whatever, it'd be very dangerous. But we can reach behind that west wall that western bank, I should say, the west bank, into Ramallah, and we can reach through this convention, and we can see men and women come to Christ. And we get them in there, we're going to start running schools of Christ, and I'm praying that God will give us all of Ramallah. You say, now, preacher, that's mighty big. Well, I believe you can ask big. I think we ought to ask big. Amen. We ought to have big faith. God deserves us to trust him enough to ask him for something big. Jesus is about to come, and the Lord is going to pour his spirit out on hungry hearts. And I believe God is making hearts hungry in the land of Israel. They're listening. They're turning to Christ. And those Arabs are coming out of Islam. I could share with you stories about how we're reaching into that Islamic world right under Allah's nose, right under Muhammad's nose. Amen. We're reaching into that Islamic world, and we're pulling them out of that, that life that's filled with a hate and perversion into the light of life in Christianity. And I want you to help us do that tonight as our ushers come forward in the West Bank, in the city of Ramallah. Young people, I want you to evangelize Ramallah tonight. I want you to reach from here to there. And I want you to complete what is needed. I want that convention to be a direct result and testimony of this youth conference. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Amen. I believe we're going to see it happen. Brother Sullivan, I'm going to ask you, if you will, to stand and ask God to bless this offering tonight.
Amen. Worship as you give tonight. praise tonight. You may be seated as the church family comes around this evening, but I want all of our pastors that are here tonight to stand. All of our pastors will stand. Amen. All of our pastors, if you'll stand, Brother Aaron Ellis is with us. He brought some backpacks um, with us for our, our project in the uh, British Virgin Islands. I want all of our youth leaders to stand. Would you stand up, youth leaders? Amen. Would you stand? All of our youth leaders, we want you to stand. Amen. Appreciate you being here so much tonight. Let's give all of these and their churches and their young people a big hand and let them know we appreciate them being with us this evening. Worship with the church family. Then Brother Chapman's going to come to preach. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I thought about this song last night when Brother Eddie was preaching, talking about how um, the Lord overcame Satan for all eternity. Ain't you glad of that? Yes. Because that we can overcome, and I'm so thankful. And it was all because of love, for God sent His only Son into the world so we could be born again. And I'm thankful for the love of God. Had it not been for love, I wouldn't be here today. And I want to in turn love others because you're not going to win them any other way than love. And I'm thankful that God is the champion of love tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention. I want to introduce Of the good and the right Stands a champion robe in white 
His height exceeds the heavens. His weight outweighs the world. His reach reaches everywhere. His age is everywhere. He is higher than the highest. He's greater than the great. No one will ever take His crown away. He's more mighty than the mightiest. And He reigns from This arena and to raise his hands in victory for me. And name the crowd crucified this king who wore the crown. And they gladly watched the champion going down. Oh, but I will never count him out for I. Up. The day he arose to obtain the title champion of love. He's higher than the highest. He's greater than the great. No one will ever take his crown away. He's more mighty than the mightiest. And he reigns from above. He's the all-time undisputed, undefeated champion of love. He's higher than the highest.
Lord, look at somebody and tell them the Lord will bring you out. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. Brother Sullivan preached last night, the one that got away. Amen. I'm glad I got away, aren't you? I'm glad you got away. Amen. The Bible tells us, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want to thank you tonight for a total offering of $1,043, I believe it is. I'd have to look back at the paper. So uh, give the Lord a good praise. Amen. This youth conference has reached to the other side of the world in the land of Israel, and you are a part. Listen to me. You are a part of what God is doing in the earth. And I want to tell you, and I told my wife I wouldn't take a lot of time and talk about this, but I, I, and I'm not going to, I promise. I want to tell you something, church. You hear me. Look at me. God is moving in this earth. Hell is fighting. The devil is fighting pastors. The devil is fighting churches who are a part of this great commission that have made up their mind to finish this great commission. But I'm telling you, God is moving in this earth, and to be a part of that is one of the greatest, is the greatest privilege outside of being born again. Amen. And Holy Ghost filled that the mind could ever possibly imagine. And you are a part of that tonight. It is so good to have Brother Lamar Chapman with us. And it's good to have Brother Eddie and the church, Brother Sullivan and the church family. We appreciate the church family tonight. My. She, she kind of tickled me a while ago. She looked at Ryan and she done that. I said, bring it up a little bit. Let's sing it some more. Amen. Because she can do that. Because they can sing. Amen. We appreciate Brother Lamar's youth group coming in uh, this afternoon and everybody that's been with us. Thank you for coming to this conference. And we want to invite you to stay with us after service over in the fellowship hall so we can all uh, fellowship together. Amen. Brother Lamar has had a rough year, I guess a rough couple of years. The last little while he has fought some battles physically. We have prayed for him, and I know God has touched him and allowed him to be with us in this conference. And it is my honor tonight to ask him to come to this pulpit to address this youth conference tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the man of God as he comes tonight. Hallelujah. I'm glad he brought me out. Darkness, out of sin, and out of bondage. Amen. Praise God. Oh, it's good to be in youth conference. It is best to destroy what the Lord brought us out of that. Amen. Praise God. I appreciate the invitation to be here. And uh, I appreciate Brother Connor allowing us to come on, knowing that we were not at 100% yet. But I do appreciate him coming. And I want to say I had several, well, I had many of you last night that came and uh, told us how you had been praying and how your church had been praying. That's why I'm able to be here with somebody this morning. And thank God for that. Amen. Well, I've got good news for you uh, concerning me. I was able to eat pizza last night. Two pizzas. First time in several months. And then I got wonderful Woody's barbecue for lunch today. They don't have those in Alabama. Amen. Uh, and, and the fellowship today was even better than the barbecue. Just a great, great time. Uh, enjoy being with Brother Eddie and the church family. I have to be being with them half the summer. Uh, off and on in different places. I'm glad to be with them. Boy, if I could turn my flesh, let nobody get a stop of flesh. But I can't. It ain't worth it. So. Brother Ed is talking about his glasses. It reminded me, he and I were preaching Fort Flag, a revival together, several years ago. I preached the first two nights, if I get it right. Brother Allen Hutton preached the ninth, and you preached the last two. And uh, that's when uh, the Lord gave me understanding that I had to have glasses because I couldn't read my text. Fort Flex pulpit, a whole lot different midway, and the light wasn't shining right down on it, and I couldn't see it. And if I remember right, Brother Eddie had on some readers. He'd come off the front pew and let me have them so I could read my text. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord returned the favor. Let him get some glasses, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, it's 
good to be here. And I know some of you traveled, but there's enough of you that didn't travel so far today. We ought to be able to have a great altar service. Amen. Well, I was hoping that would be a little more encouraging. Amen. How many wants a great altar service? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get in this. Now I'm going to have to just hit the points and the highlights and before I give out a breath so I can get to the message and we can can have a great altar service tonight. Numbers 15. The book of Numbers chapter 15. see how Brother Caleb does it. He is boxed in. I know I've got breathing problems, but man, without breathing problems, I'd still be having a hard time breathing. Brother Eddie, he just choked me down while he was preaching last night with that coat and tie on. And I could see the blood vessels popping out in his neck. Man, just take it off. You're choking me to death. <laughs> Numbers 15. 37, 15 and 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Could you repeat that with me, that very last phrase, I'm the Lord your God. Could you do that with me? Let's say it together. I am the Lord your God. A little louder. I am the Lord your God. Even louder. I One time louder. Let's ask him to come and bless us with his presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. What a wonderful opportunity we have before us tonight as we feel the presence of the Lord in this sanctuary. And Lord, I thank you for every young person, every adult, every church represented, every lost soul that's here tonight. And I thank God the way you've Showed this to me. Put it in my heart. Let me see this. But I need that extra, extra unction of the Holy Ghost. God, not only to take over this body, but Lord, to reach every soul in this service that around these altars, it won't be the average, ordinary altar service tonight. But Lord, we can leave here rejoicing in what the Lord has done. We give you praise and glory in your wonderful, wonderful name. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to get something from the Lord tonight. Praise God. I want to preach tonight on brighter than the blue. Brighter than the blue. Now in this passage, the Lord's given Moses command that for generations, he said throughout your generations, that at the bottom of your garment, your robe, whatever it might be, on the fringe of it, you'll put a ribbon of blue. Now imagine that. He didn't say your garment had to be a certain color. Didn't have to be this or that. Just on your garment, add 
a ribbon of blue on the fringe, the border, the hem. And the reason for that was that every time you looked at your neighbor and you saw on the hem of that garment that band or ribbon of blue, it would remind you that you were to keep all the commandments of the Lord. It said here, he said that you may remember the commandments and do them. To keep you from going after your own heart and what your own eyes see. That ribbon of blue was a reminder of the commandments of the Lord. I have looked and looked and I just knew some young person would have on a bright blue coat. And of all nights tonight, there's none. Cooper's got on a, some kind of blue. Just stand up, Coop. Come around. When Cooper would walk, just walk back and forth. When Cooper would walk, now he's got on a coat, but if you would see that blue, you turn back, come. Every, when you go to the market or when you go to the family reunion or wh when you just walking down the street, every time you saw that blue, it should automatically remind you. Brother, would you just get up and go toward the door? You see that blue, it would remind you. Can you imagine now, everywhere you turned, there was just blue. Now, y'all didn't see this, but I did. It's amazing how much blue is in here. Thank you, God. Everywhere you turn, it's just blue. Now, when, when, you, when you see the Word of God and you see what the Lord's teaching here, that was just a reminder. Now, there are times we need reminders. There's times we just get a little dry and times we get a little slack and we need a preacher to preach to us that the Lord's re reminding us of different things in our life that we need. There, there's times it's a Sunday school lesson. You came in tired and sleepy and you yawn, and, but all of a sudden the Holy Ghost comes down on that teacher and the Lord begins to speak through them that lesson to remind you of what you ought to be doing or what you should have been doing. That Sometimes it's in a song or a testimony that the Lord just speaks to us and reminds us. This youth conference here is basically a reminder to you young folks. Uh, not only what the Lord has already told you that He would do and shown to you the things that He will do, He's done through others, He'll do through you, but then there's things that you don't even know yet, you've never experienced, you've never thought about that the Lord will bring that reminder. Maybe you read it in the Word or you heard it two years ago and you forgot about it, but thank God He's got a way to remind us of where we need to be, of what we can possess, what we can have in the Lord. This, this ribbon, this blue on the border, the hem of that garment, it was intended to be a reminder but if I got everybody that's wearing blue just to start walking around this place, by the time this service is over, you'd already forget it. Because it gets common. No doubt that's what Jesus was saying about the Pharisees. He said, they, uh, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments that all their works that they do are to be seen by men. What he was saying was, even in the Gospels, the Pharisees still had that ribbon of blue, but they'd made it large and wide, and it was a spectacle that wherever they went, everybody could see not just blue, but a big ribbon of blue. What they were doing was they were showing everybody how holy they were, how righteous they were. And I'm wearing this so you can be reminded. But the Lord said, you're only doing it to be seen of men. He said, just remember, the blue is not your heart. It's only a reminder of what should be in your heart. 
Hallelujah. We can preach and we can remind, but you've got to get to a place that you put the commandments in your heart. The blue doesn't save anybody. The blue doesn't change any heart. The blue doesn't make a difference in anybody if you don't pay attention to what it's reminding you of. Hallelujah. He said you can make them wide. You can make them bright. You can do whatever you want. But the reason for the ribbon of blue is so that in your heart you would not only be remember the commandments, but you would actually do them. Hallelujah. I said the blue was wonderful, but it's only a reminder. But if you could ever get that word in your heart. If you could ever get that word hid in your heart. If you could ever get that word rooted in your heart. If you could ever get that word producing through your life. It's more than just a reminder. It's more than just a ribbon of blue that we can notice from that one to that one. Oh, Pharisees, you've got a big, wide ribbon of blue. But I'd rather have the commandments in your heart and not even wear any blue. Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. We preach and we sing and we teach and we testify. But what we're really here to do is get it in your heart. Get it in your life. Get it rooted and grounded in your everyday life. That you don't just get it at church. But wherever you go, at that schoolhouse, with your friends, riding down the road, the Word of God is alive inside of your soul. The Pharisees had the ribbon of blue, but they didn't have the word in their heart. But David said, thy law is my delight. Other places he said, I delight in thy law. (laughs) You know what David was saying? He said, I don't have to have a ribbon of blue. I've already fell in love with the word. I want you to know the word is my delight. My delight is the law, the word. And thank God for the ribbon of blue that I see. But I don't have to have a reminder. I am the reminder. (laughs) Thank God for the ribbon of blue that was on daddy. Thank God for the ribbon of blue that was on Samuel. But now I've got that commandment. I've got his law. I've got his word in my heart. I don't have to be reminded. I'll walk around and be a reminder. I want that word to be so alive. I want the word to be so real. I want that word to be so strong that wherever I go, I don't have to be reminded. I am a reminder. I don't want to just come to church and sit on a pew and wait till I get a problem to want to go to the altar. Whether I'm singing or whether I'm worshiping, I want everybody to see that word is hid in my heart. That law is the light of my life. It is my delight. Young folks, you don't have to just be preached to and coached and cheered on. You can have this word in your life. delight in thy law. Young folks, thank God for YouTube. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God the people that's willing to sacrifice. You, you young folks don't have any idea the money it takes just to try to help you this weekend. You don't have any idea all the sacrifices that take place that people have done and will do just so you can come and be reminded. But if you could leave Sunday afternoon and you don't have to be reminded anymore, you are a reminder when you go back to your church. You become the reminder at your school. When you can walk down those halls and people that once went to church, friends that once had an experience with the Lord, and even those that's never been to church, just by you being there and the word of God being manifest through your physical body, they can see the Lord Jesus Christ in you. You don't need to be reminded. You are the reminder. 
You are someone's reminder. You have become the ribbon of blue for somebody in your life. I wish I had the ability to preach over an hour tonight, but I don't. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? Matthew 9. You remember that? She said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment. Most every commentary I read on that, they believe it was that ribbon of blue that she reached out and touched. Well, I found out that she wasn't the only one that touched the hem of the garment. In Matthew 14, it says, when Jesus went to Gennesaret, the men of the city, uh, the place told, heard that Jesus was come. They gathered all that were diseased to him. And it says in 1436, and besought that they might, might only touch the hem of his garment. This is more than a woman with the issue of blood. Everyone diseased in that place, they came and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. The hem of his garment. It was more than that one woman. There was many who came and if they could but touch the hem, the ribbon of blue. Wait a minute. I thought the ribbon of blue was just to be a reminder to keep the commandments. I, I thought it was just a reminder to remember them. She is reaching out to touch that hem of his garment. But I don't think she's doing it to remember his commandments. I don't think they brought the disease and each one is reaching out and touched that border of blue just to remember the commandments. I think something has happened and they they were realized it's not just a reminder anymore. That blue lets us know he is the word of God. He is. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not just touching to be remembered, to be reminded. I'm touching that blue because he is the word of God. I said they're not doing it to remember. They're not trying to live by the word of God. All of a sudden, they need what's in that blue. They need him that's wearing the blue. They're reaching out to him that stands for the blue. That they can find the healer. They can find the savior. They can find the deliverer. Hallelujah. I want you to know this ribbon of blue is more than a reminder. It's trying to get Jesus Christ, which is the word of God, inside your life. Young people, he's got to become more than a Christmas story to you. He's got to be more than a Sunday school lesson to you. He's got to be more than what somebody sings a song about. You know of Jesus, but do you really know Jesus? You've heard of Jesus, but do you live with Jesus? Some of you have heard about him, but you've yet to meet him. There's some of you felt his presence when he came into the room, but you've yet to let him come and live. I'm talking to some church young folks. You sang in the choir, you hadn't missed a Sunday of Sunday school and who knows when, and you was raised right there on that pew, but you've yet to really let him come live in that heart. How do I know that? If he really lived there, you wouldn't be so up and down. I said, if he really lived in your heart, you wouldn't shout at conference and then go and smoke a cigarette when mom and daddy wasn't looking. I said, if he really lived inside of your life, you wouldn't just come and weep in an altar and then go out there and live like the world if he lives inside of you. I don't want him just in here. I want him when I go home. I want him wherever I go. When I wake up in the morning and when I go to bed at night, I don't want to just feel him while I'm singing in the choir. I want to feel him on the way to school on Monday morning. I want to feel him when I'm talking on that cell phone. I want to feel
feeling. When I get that text message, then I don't need to respond. I said he's got to be more than a lesson. He's got to be more than a sermon. He's got to be Lord. He's got to be master of your life. got to go past the blue till you get Jesus living inside of you. I, I don't know how much time I got on this, but I got to say this again. There's some of you young folks have got to realize just sitting on a church pew ain't going to get it. Just because your mom and daddy's got it doesn't mean you got it. I'm not talking to young folks that don't know. I'm talking about you that's been here. Service after service, year after year, conference after conference, and you still wind up in the same old spot over and over and over again. You know why? Because that blue reminds you, but it's never got in your heart. It's never got in your life. You want it there. You just never got it there. But I come to tell somebody tonight, tonight is the night you can open the door. He's a knocking. He's a knocking, but you've got to open the door. Thank God for the blue that reminds me, but I've got to let him come in. I don't need just to feel his presence. I don't need just to let him bless me one more time. I need him to come and live a Abide, reside, just come and take part of my life permanently. I don't want to just feel him at times. I want to know he's there every day of my life. Man, oh, after, after the woman with the issue of blood, he touched the hem of the garment. After Jesus said the Pharisees have enlarged the borders, I, if you, I, I hadn't, I don't remember and I hadn't found whether there's any more mention of this ribbon of blue again in the New Testament. Well, that bothered me because he said throughout your generation, and I'm sure there were many devout Jews that probably kept this tradition up. We just don't find it. And, and I read this, and the Lord began to deal with me. Lord, where's the reminder? If, if it's not going to tell us about the blue at the fringe of the garment, it, it, you still had to go on. <laughs> and Brother Eddie's preached about Paul, the great apostle. When he was converted on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, he saw that bright light. And what amazes me is when that bright light shone and he fell to the ground and that voice spoke, he responded immediately, Lord. <laughs> he didn't say, who is that? What's going on here? It's a little creepy. He said, Lord. Why? Why did Paul, a sinner, a murderer, all of it, he knew it was the Lord. Well, well, most of us, or a lot of us, let me put it that way, I believe that when Stephen was being stoned and this young Paul or Saul of Tarsus held the coats of those stoned in Stephen, they looked upon him as though they saw the face of an angel. I believe that's, that's something that got a hold of Paul. When that bright light shone down on the road to Damascus, he cried, Lord, why? That's what he heard Stephen say, Lord. And Stephen said, Lord, and now Paul is responding, Lord. That bright light's got to be similar to something he saw about Stephen. But how does he know this goes together? But then I found out that Paul, before he was converted, 
was taught by Gamaliel, which was a doctor of the law. So I began to search and find, now what law was they teaching? Now this is what I, I, I understand. Now if you've got something different, you come let me know. But what, what I understand at this point is that law was the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Some say it was the first five books and the prophets and the Psalms. Nevertheless, if Gamaliel taught him the law, now I, I, I'm, I'm just assuming, and we should never assume anything. Let me, I, I'm wondering if he was taught the law, did he have Exodus 2 and 3 where Moses was at a burning bush and that bush was on fire but ain't burning? And it got a hold of Moses' life and changed everything. I don't find Stephen was wearing a border blue. Possibly he was, but it didn't mention it. Paul didn't mention anything about seeing a ribbon of blue around somebody's garment. But if he was a student of the law and he knew the law, I, I just wonder if he'd read about that burning bush. And then when he saw Stephen, he'd never seen anything like this. It was as though the man was on fire. Because the Bible says when Stephen was chosen as one of the deacons in Acts 6, he was full of the Holy Ghost. It didn't say he was filled. It said he was full. He had been filled and filled and filled until he was full of the Holy Ghost. And he was full of faith. And he was full full of wisdom, and he was full of power. Every deacon ought to have that. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, full of wisdom, and full of power. Oh, I hope you get what I'm trying to get across to you tonight. He knew the law, and therefore he had to know that Moses had that burning bush experience. And now there's a man full of the Holy Ghost that looks at the face of an angel and says, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And now that bright light, I think he found some brighter than the blue. I said, I think he found some brighter than the blue. And blue was a reminder, but there's a fire. I said, there's a fire burning in that man that had a greater effect than a ribbon of blue. Reason I, I feel that way is there's times in my life before I got saved and since I've gotten saved, there's certain people you get around full of the Holy Ghost. And you don't even have to be at church. As a man who used to go to a church, Doug and I got saved in. He was blind, couldn't see anything. He had that old wood house. I'd knock on that door. He said, who is it? I said, Brother Otis, it's Brother Lamar. Come on in, son. He couldn't see me. But I'd sit there for two hours. He'd talk to me. And the Holy Ghost would come down in that little room. Furniture duct taped together. Flies flying everywhere. It didn't bother him because he was feeling the Holy Ghost. And he began to tell me what the Lord had done and how the Lord had anointed him and how the Lord had used him. And what he was saying was, if the Lord did it for this blind man, I just believe he can do it for a young boy named Lamar Chapman. And, and I'd get around others, and they were, all they'd have to do is quote one scripture and walk off. And it was though they left a fire burning inside my heart. There's those who testify, and they're not boring. And you don't think about other things when they testify. Tears begin to flow down your face. You know why? There's something burning in them that's brighter than the blue. 
It's a reminder, but it goes beyond the reminder. It lets you feel a little bit of that fire that's burning inside of them. Hallelujah. Was it Brother Drum? Brother Drum, Brother Ed has told me about Brother Drum. Oh, when it gets around him, you can feel the glory. You've been there, haven't you? That's why I'm just wondering. That's the reason Paul responded, Lord. if you don't have Jesus. You've got to be born again first. I said you've got to be born again first. But once you get Jesus living inside of you, you get filled and full of the Holy Ghost. He'll take that Jesus living in you. He'll not just magnify him to your life, but he'll magnify him out of your life. That wherever you go, it's a reminder of who he is, what he can do, what he has already done. Stand up, Brother John. Is this Brother Lena? Their daddy, deacon in our church, a year ago this month, he went in to have his appendix taken out on a Tuesday afternoon, and they come in and said, we removed the cancer. What cancer? He's got colon cancer, and it's already went to his uh, outer lining of his stomach and into his liver. He just went in for his appendix and come out with cancer. They gave, diagnosed him with stage four liver cancer. 46 year old. That's his kids right there. As in last week of August of last year, tonight, he has no sign of cancer in his body. <laughs> oh, I can tell it ain't you. I can tell you wasn't the one that was diagnosed. He yeah, said, the doctor, how long will I be on chemo? He said, the rest of your life, sir. He said, no, I want to ask, when can I go back to work? He said, sir, you'll never go back to work. You know what she's saying? She gave him the death sentence. <laughs> I, stage four liver cancer, you don't recover. But I, I'd like to see her again. So, ma'am, you counted out Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Because what that doctor didn't know, the Sunday night before he got sick on Monday, the Holy Ghost fell in our church, and Brother Scott shouted all over that platform. I had a dream on Monday night. Didn't even know he was sick till Tuesday evening. And the Lord showed me, oh, but concerning Brother Scott and I, there was a big old cobra snake, and he was out to get us. But all of a sudden, when I went to kill that cobra snake, he turned blood red with white stripes. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, my blood doesn't just save. My blood heals also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He and I got sick the same time. He doesn't have cancer, and I feel the anointing on a Friday night. You know what 
what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to let you feel a little bit of fire. I'm just trying to let you find something that's brighter than the blue. You've gotten carnal. You've gotten away from the Lord. You don't worship like you once did. But can I just pass by? Can I just pass by? Can I just pass by? My God, I pray that this fire burning in me, my God, I get hold of somebody and become brighter than the blue. That doctor said, Mr. Chapman, once we do surgery and you heal, it'll take two to three months for your lungs to begin to heal themselves. That's what they told me. But I had a little old lady. I was sitting in that chair on the platform midway. I, was, I didn't even preach that day. I just taught and I was give slamming. She walked up there from another church. A woman I revere highly, she walked up there and said, God told me to tell you something. She said, matter of fact, he told me as soon as you got sick, but every time I get ready to come tell you, he said, not now. But this morning, he said, you can tell me. <laughs> I'm bawling about that time. My wife's a bawling. I said, what, Sister Ronnie? She said, you know that story, how Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Jesus said, come on, come down, You're going. I'm going home with you today. She said, there's going to be a service where when you leave, Jesus is going home and you're going to be completely made whole. <laughs> I just wonder if it's on a Friday night in McClinic, Florida. <laughs> And this preacher right here obeyed the Lord and told me last night what I've already heard twice. Two other people's already told me, your ministry's going to be better than before. <laughs> Woo! I'm just trying to give you something brighter than the ribbon of blue. When you get a fire burning, that will just affect everybody around. Young folks, you don't have to be in and out. You don't have to get a shouting at conference and live like the world at school. There's something greater than a blue ribbon in this place. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Get that fire burning in your life. And when you walk down the halls, somebody's going to feel that fire. Am I your you get around your friends and I don't know what they're going to talk about but you begin to tell them what the Lord has done and that fire begin to burn it's going to be brighter than the blue if you've never had the Holy Ghost you need it tonight but many of you have had it you need a refilling you need a refilling you need a refilling right here tonight There's some in this place brighter than the blue ribbon. I wish somebody full of Holy Ghost would just walk them down that aisle. Somebody else full of Holy Ghost, walk them down that aisle. Somebody full of the Holy Ghost. My God, I, that's it. Hatahisha, ha ha. Somebody for the Holy Ghost walk around these altars. If we'll surround this place with this fire, somebody's got to feel it. 
Satamakata. I feel it on this platform. I know that. I wish somebody get out their pews and run up to this front. Say, I want the infilling. Somebody get out. I want a refill. Come on, don't delay. Get out the pews, young folks. Let's fill up these altars. Come on, adults, let's surround them. And let's let that fire burn tonight. It's brighter than the blue ribbon. It's more powerful than the blue ribbon. It'll do more than that blue band around that garment. That fire to burn. That fire to burn. That fire to burn on me. <laughs> 